told you lie. Yeah. Uh. Come on, kids. Rock your kicks. Come on, kids. Rock your kicks. Cause there's nothing a pair of kicks can't fix. Just nothing a pair of kicks can't fix. Oh, we last ever heard the rapper make the sound cool. Sound cool. Sound cool. Sound cool. Sound cool. Sound cool. Nothing a pair of kicks can fix, just nothing a pair of kicks can fix. Uh, once upon a time, a part time still alive. Seeds of dreams planted before beats and rhymes. Snotty nose kid living below poverty line. Pick a boot flipping through views of sneaker lines. Uh, as the promised streamers, yeah, uh, we're talking NBA, we're talking NBA Africa. Slim has been a critical part ever since they launched in South Africa. He's been one of the appointed MCs from uh, for all the events, and I just felt like it's important for us to touch down with him because he knows a little bit about the NBA Junior. Uh, he's gonna be touching base on that. But besides that, man, I wanna just catch up with you, Slim, and uh, to the Hunter for Kicks uh, fans. They wanna get to know who the guys they see online. Who is Slim? Where are you from, man? How you, how, you know? Tell us, just break it down. Yeah, and. Uh, like MK, MK, Wamatiki, Wamatiki, you know, I'm from the ghetto, you know, and I'm really honored to be from there. Taught us a lot of things, you know. Uh, we, we wanted to be like you guys, fresh with the, with the, with the, with the kick culture, yes. you know. So we used to always throw up the, the all stars, you know, and the poles and everything, you know. So, yeah, um, I'm, that's where I'm from, bro. I love all, I enjoy this. And I'm, I'm a little proud to MK Fresh. Yes, and, yes. Yeah. How, how did you, how, how did you get into it? Because uh, I know you were with a ch uh, charity organization in Clip Town yeah. that you were working with, uh, and there were NBA people. Tell me that story. NBA people coming, and you were telling Rasta, like, yo, I need to talk yeah. to these people. Tell me that story. Tell the kids that story. Okay, so that story basically fresh as well. As you know, um, in 2004, my mom always wanted to keep me out of trouble because it was gang life for yes. so my mom, and she told me a sky all the time since like 2002. Yes. I was like, nah. And I was like, 2004, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go study acting. Yeah. Yes. And then when we went there, people were like, yo, Slim, NBA was here. I'm like, the NBA was here. Yeah. And the, the kids are like, yeah, I'm like, do y'all know who this is? Yeah. The bag, I'm like, nah, Slim, you know, it's just told people. I'm like, y'all don't understand. Yeah. So then I told Bob in 2005, like, yeah, I want to be part of this, you know? So Bob's yeah. like, leave the acting and focus on both because you have a passion for it. Yeah. That's where I met some of the most influential people in my life. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know, yes. uh, Todd Jacobson, yes. Tara, Kathy, who took me as a kid. Don't. And um, a father figure in Marcus Campbell was a player at the time as well. You know, so I, and then Loki, he paid for my school fees with the NBA as well. So, you know, when they put me to Boston, you know, and I always wanted to go to the suburbs because I went down to Bekasi don't understand how big the suburbs is. So yes. I always wanted to compete and show people yes. that we can be better people, even if you're from Gaza, you know? Go. So the NBA did that for me. I went through school in 2009, no, 2010 was my breakthrough with them. It was the year they had the lockout. I don't even remember the lockout. It was crazy. Uh, yeah, I remember the lockout. Yes. It was crazy. Yeah. It was nuts. <laughs> those, those were the beginning of it, yeah. I think, for, for SA in terms of like basketball being yeah. officially like, yo, we in the country. I mm -hmm. think that was that was the moment yeah. for me. It's like, oh, something might happen. Happen, yeah. yeah. So they, they, they couldn't bring any current NBA players to the thing because they were in discussions and I MC BWB. Uh, I, I see you got the best. Tell, tell the people about the BWB. What what do you actually that, that program? So Basketball at Borders Africa is a program where they choose 100 of the best kids in Africa Go. to participate in a one week camp. So NBA players are going to come, NBA coaches, they will get taught the fundamentals. You know, I see some boys on the court outside there with the Go. BWB shorts and everything. Yes. They participated. So it's good to see them grow through that program and just get the valuable skills that you might have to pay for in the camp and they get it for free by, by, by the talent, you know, and working so, hard. So you get a chance like every year to host these tournaments and see these kids. And some of them, yeah. tell the people, some of them get an opportunity to yeah. play in the NBA if they're good enough. Mm -hmm. So we currently, we got, yo, it's been Ju great. Joel Embiid. Embiid. Yeah. Joel Embiid, the guy who, who's on the vinyl uh, in, in front, <laughs> yeah. I think at the back. Is actually part of that uh, be uh, uh, basketball uh, without borders yes, Africa, right? There. Because it, it is a program that goes around the world. There's yes. China one, there's a but the Europe Africa one and, is, and is crazy. Africa is huge because most of the players yes. right now are from Africa. Right? That's what I'm saying, and yeah. Africa's doing good. I wanted to talk to you about something which we yes. were going to discuss in the podcast. Yes. I just saw some comments I didn't like, but Pascal Siakam. Yes. So uh, he won a ring with the Raptors. So I don't yes. know if you saw what Masai did with the team. No, I didn't. Masai has made the Raptors African. 
Yes. Because I saw Patrick, actually, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw I saw the line the yeah. lineup now, but where do you think they're gonna go without the superhero? With the superhero? I, I don't know. I mean Pascal MK, I'm just happy for Pascal. He signed one thirty million yeah. max contract yeah. as an African yeah. player. That, that that was crazy. You know? It's mad hot in here, Slim man. I'm sorry for, for, <laughs> for keeping you inside this hot box. That but I'm enjoying the, the, the discussion, discussion. So, so I'm not I'm not gonna I'm, I'm with you, my I'm brother. People need to see how hot the show is. Yes. That's how hot the hot the I show is hot. You gotta sweat. Like if you're not sweating and you're in here, like don't be in here. It's you a know? hot box. That's what I'm saying, no bro. Doubt. So, yeah. I, I mean, for him to do that, special Serge Ibaka, mm. you know, and mm. and uh, like so many great people on that team right now, mm. you know, and seeing they're a lot in of Canada now. In yeah, the they can, my boy. In the six. You know what I'm saying with Drake. So Drake, what? Do you, what do you think about the the teams now with the with the two superstars mm -hmm. matching up as homies? Uh, trying to get the ring. Two and three. Yes. Two and three. Yes. TG and your boy Kawhi. Yes. All right. I, it's mad sick because I mean they beat the Lakers without Paul George the other night. Yes. And when Paul comes back, he it's makes, gonna be a problem. That's what I'm saying. I bro. think that people undermine the Clippers, and mm -hmm. I mean, and they also forget Kawhi was quiet and yes. took the ring. He was yes. quiet. That's how he, he does. never replied. Skip. He never replied anybody. Yep. He go. He went. I was like, I'm going to get the ring, yeah. and I'm gonna leave it at the court. Like yeah. my reply will be at the court. That's and for me, what captured me, even the moment where uh, Popovich had a, yeah. had a had a squabble with him yeah. and talking bad about him and whatnot, and for uh, for for them to even. Uh, sell him or trade him yeah. uh, outside the the stage Trade, yeah. was like a, was like a, almost a, uh, uh, like we, we we don't we don't like, like you, you type of yeah. vibe right we don't need you yeah we don't need you yeah and then he came back and and did that it was like almost like a god story story yeah it was a crazy story because I, I remember one day I was talking to him at the shop Canada wanted to keep that boy so bad fresh yeah. they promised him his own they they said they're gonna buy him his house yeah. which he wants yeah, yeah. he's gonna no, get you he know had, what I mean he had a, some <laughs> Some restaurant, uh, yes. he had a lifetime, uh, to he can eat, eat for life, uh, the whole lifetime. I was like, Fresh. nigga, I'll stay in Canada. You know what happened as well is like there's a Vince Carter situation yeah. where Vince Carter uh, was playing for the Raptors mm -hmm. and, and he got mad love out yeah. there and yep. he stayed. Dog. Yeah. Vince Carter is almost like a mayor in, in, in Toronto, Canada, yes. uh, in Canada rather. So definitely, man, I think Kawhi should have used that opportunity to kind of grow his brand yeah. and, and, and have a base as well. But as well, I felt like it was a point that he wanted to prove and oh, he yeah. proved it. You know. Definitely, and he didn't need to have a lot of superstars around him. He didn't need to have a lot of, you know, because I mean, the only superstar he had like was like Kyle Lowry, you know. Ah, uh, but Kyle Lowry, uh, yeah, well, I got his jersey, but yeah. he, 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 he's not even top twenty, so yeah. he, he wasn't with the right the people, people, man. Yeah. To be quite honest, okay. but he's still talking. Yes. So that that says something. Exactly, and I mean, kid. like the emergence of somebody like Pascal Siakam from from a player like Kawhi as well was good for Canada and, and yes. good for the NBA yes. to see and, yes. and good Canada, for the East. Canada Canada loves basketball, man. Yeah. Like, like it's it's it, as much as they were like uh, the biggest in the yeah. hockey hockey yeah. hockey sport. Yeah. But right now, in terms of basketball, everybody's coming around. And once you get the support mm -hmm. from their fan base, they yep. go all, all out. You yes. saw the fans, the yep. fan, um, the yeah. fan the parade, the fan parade, and the they, they used to have these um, fan parks. Yeah. Where it's like you're not at the stadium, but you're, you're watching the game. It's and it feels crazy. like you like even outside the yeah, stadium, they yeah, do something like yeah, that. You yeah. know? So and, and I mean, talking about fresh, talking about me when the NBA, when the NBA took me over, I MC, so I MC a lot of the NBA events. Dope. You know what I mean? So yeah. I did two other games. Dope. I did last year's game. You were there, y'all looking nice. Hunting Dope. for kicks was there. You know, and you also you, like, you yeah. also do the the Africa versus World uh, yes. uh, 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 tournament that yeah. happens uh, annually. Annual, yes. That shit is crazy. I saw you with Melo, and 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 tell the kids, uh, Dwight, Dwight Howard Dwight is your homie, my right? Boy, yeah, Dwight, Dwight Howard. Really and and we used to mind. get T-shirts from him. Remember yeah. when I was still at Nike? Like, yes. And so he, he would used get. To, yeah. He used to send me some of the packages Definitely, you get. Definitely yes. Um, tell the people about what type of person so he is, man. He's, because he's, he's, like, a, he's a he's a dope. he's now with the Lakers. He's, he's now with the Lakers. He's, he's back there. He's back there. He's back there. After what the, do you think? After the Kobe <laughs> after the Kobe squabble. What do you think now? I I think. I think he'll become, you know, okay. when when people get a second chance, yeah. they're out to uh, the uh, adjust yeah. their behavior and whatnot. I think, I think, man, he'll do yeah. well. I, I think I he'll think, do it. I think so too. It's just like it's too early to tell. What I liked about him, me and you had the discussion on my pre Melo, and we were talking about how how Melo's ego is so big yes. and how Melo it hurts us yeah. man. he doesn't want to come off the bench, he doesn't yes. want to do. And yes. then another close friend of mine who was captaining uh, Africa two years ago, Tabo Sefalosha. Yes, yes, yes. I asked him, bro, what time, what what type of 
guy is Dwight. And yes. he was like, Dwight was in that mental phase because Dwight still believed MK when he was there yeah. to score 20 points yeah. and have 20 rebounds. Yeah. In his mind, yeah. he had That's that. That's why Kobe was like, yo, man, slow down. You know what I mean? I am the star. That's what you're saying now. So with him on the Lakers, with a mindset that's changed now with the LeBron, it's and I mean Boogie's out hurt, yeah. you know. So we we, we, we cool. might see a different Dwight Howard, and you know, hopefully they can contend in the West. So, yeah. Tell us a little bit about the NBA Junior that's happening at Royal Buffalo King. Crazy. Last year it happened at the same yeah. same time. Yeah. How many kids do, do wow. they pull out a, a, a year? Wow. And what what is that tournament all about? Wow, MK. So I've been fortunate to MC. I think about five or four of those events. You yes. know, it's super super crazy. They started off with like three thousand kids. Yeah. Uh, MC there, right? And oh, then it's the area. Nice fight. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. You're carrying on. All right. So, like, for MK, it was like 2005 kids, and it's just been growing. So now, when you go there, MK, it's like an NBA game. Bro. Yes. It's hectic. Yes. 10,000 kids packed it up. You yes. know, last year was phenomenal. I mean, Casper was performing there. Yes. Uh, he was there. I emceed with Nomuzli. Yes. Bena. They got nasty C. They got nasty C this, this year. year. Yeah. And our girl. Yes. Yeah. Shoma Jose. So I'm super. Shoma Jose has been an intricate part as yes. well with the, with the NBA family, yes. right? They Definitely. took her to the All-Star game Definitely. and whatnot. Yeah. Dope. Yeah, so they, they, they're starting like, I mean, what I like, they, they're sharing it now, Fresh. It's not a Dope. thing like, yo, it's like, you know, Slim is just emceeing alone or this or that. You know, yeah. I've been emceeing with Moosley. You doing things at the thing. I mean, the other day I, I met you at the uh -huh, office, uh -huh. you were setting up, you know, yeah, and no doubt. Scoop was in there. Like, I mean, they're using the right people. And that's what I say, when you use the right people for the right products, MK, it's going to it's gonna flourish. No doubt. You know, so my jaws is more on that entertainment side, yes. the culture, the lifestyle, yes. you know. Fresh is there with the kicks and that whole thing. Slim yes. is there with the emceeing because the energy he brings scoop as well with the yes. energy. like you know so it's it's a beautiful thing to see and even like i mean people that we worked with my putty them going into work for the yes. nba now is yes. is an inspiration to us as well us, you know yeah. and, and, and and getting that bag getting the check you know but Dillard Capsule bringing you the best people, best influencers, best celebrities, best game changers. But right now I'm chilling next to the one and only, one of the best stylists in the country right now. She works with big magazines, Mario Kids, you know what I mean? Like, I, I can't even start to give her credit, but I'm going to allow her to tell us a little bit about where she's from and all that. Be Diamond. What up, baby? Hi. How you doing? I'm dope. Uh, we had Capsule and I'm um, obviously catching up with people and you uh, are definitely yes. 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 I saw your t-shirts from far away. I was like, yo, that t-shirt is fly. Where'd you get that? Dope, dope. 
the, the search is uh, cat, yeah? oh, shit. That's dope. They're also doing some Levi's diving at right now. Right. Right. Tell me a little bit about um, your upbringing. For you to be like a, like a, a token of style, is it in the family or, or people that are just, or are you just an odd head? Sometimes, uh, you know, they'll see you with the pink uh, shirt and your, your your leather pants and they're like, yo, it's rosy. Just talk about the dark side. Like, what so, what did you have to go through, your hardships? So like I'm saying, um, it's a long game. I've been working for 40 years. Um, now I have my own apartment, I can buy my own shoes, I can buy my own leather. But that stuff takes a really long time. And you can't make your career about the drip. Um, your career is about your clients and about the quality of work you put out. Service. And most of the time, it's got fuck all to do with you. Excuse my language. It has nothing to do with you. Can you follow a brief? Can you stay true to a brand and not make it about you? If you make it all about you, then you must just run your own business. You, know, you must have your own fashion labels and do campaigns for yourself instead of other people. I find that a lot of people don't know how to follow briefs because it becomes an ego thing. Yes. You need to take yourself out of it and and work work with the clients to make that shit work dope. Um, don't get lost in the sauce don't get lost it's in the a sauce. long game take your you, time you do you do need the sauce but don't get lost in it don't get lost in it right 
without yeah, there, there's a bigger picture branding ad advertising it's it's a bigger picture and you got to look at all your resources and every brief is different you know again if you just make it about yourself then all your work starts to look the same yes so you so you have to take inspiration from different places and make that shit pop Dope. Yeah. are you always um, i mean in in some other ads like I, I hear you taking the brief are you always trying to push telling our stories Absolutely. Especially Absolutely. with international brands. Especially with international brands. I mean, actually for Nike, this year I've, I've done a bunch of huge international um, campaigns for Nike, for Jordan. One of the Converse just came out. I just shot for Adidas last week. Most yes. international those, you know, yes. will barely even see them here. Yes. But because I'm in the room, I make sure that we are represented as well as possible. Be Diamond, I don't know if we can carry on, but I think we can still carry on. My guy says we can. Uh, tell, t t t tell us now a little bit about Cape Town, because I, mean, I when I got a glimpse of your work, I think it was 10 years ago right. in Cape Town, um, right. uh, I was affiliated with the likes of Spoke, Lebo Rastaba, and those were the people you used to hang around with. So right. tell we me about the... We went to, we all went to, I went, I studied at Vega, that's yes. where I got my degree from in branding and um, in art direction. Um, after that, I moved overseas. I moved to London to go study some more, um, more of the fashion stuff. Yes. And I came back, and then I worked in magazines and publishing. When I came back home, I got a job as a fashion editor in Marie Claire, South Africa. Yes. So I had to move to Cape Town. Dope. I had to move to Cape Town for that. Um, it was it was great, but after a while, I feel like Cape Town, Cape Town has no place for a black man. Has no place for a black man. <laughs> has no place for a young black, powerful, yes. strong, badass young black woman. Yes. And um, I woke up one day and I was like, if I want to create for us. I need to, to get. I need out. to. And I, I, I had to get out of there and come back home, where our people are, where we have events like Capsule Fest, and there's yes. so many young black, brown kids walking around, yes. which is something you don't find in Cape Town. Yes. And I wanted to create, and I do create um, stuff for us, and I, I needed to get out of there. So you're talking about racism, basically. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. It's crazy. I, I was talking to. I get paid like I get paid here. Yes. My career would have taken a lot longer. Yes. You know they style for you out of there. Of course. And as a black kid. If you can get out, get out. So, we're talking Cap, so what do you know about Cap? So I know last year you were here. How was it last year? And I know you haven't seen the inside yet. We just grabbed you from the entrance. <laughs> you just grabbed me from the entrance. But, I'm not but it supposed feels... to be here. So I, I step in and out of, I, I get um, overwhelmed in spaces yeah. like this, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I prefer to be at work constantly. Yeah. But then I know that this is also part of my job. I need to see what the kids are doing. I need to see what's out there. I need to see what's happening. And I think this is a really great representation of what's happening in the streets. So Dope. It's, it's, it's a great initiative. It's great. Dope. B, I'm so proud of you. Uh, keep on, you know, waving the flag. Like we need black girls really doing amazing work. Uh, and there's a handful in my catalog that I really appreciate and love, and will always support. Love is always here, when I, whether I'm around or not. Just know that. And then the other thing was that I wanted to find out what do you know about NBA um, Junior, uh, NBA Junior League in South Africa? Do you know anything Absolutely about it? Absolutely nothing. If it has anything to do with sports, I know it's sports, though. I know it's yes. basketball. Yes. I know that. Yes. I know about. Um, do you know about the Africa, the Africa versus world that they do annually? No. Okay, cool. No, clue. no. my head is in the fashion clouds, but I should step out of it for a second. No yes. doubt. No, no doubt. Because what, what we're trying to do even with this is to create awareness about this NBA Junior League that happens annually in, in the Northwest, Royal Bafu King. And it's been going on for over six years now. And they got 6,000 kids that they teach in basketball, under 15, so under 13. So exactly. Important. Exactly. So we're here promoting the event that's happening right now is actually the finals today. So can you wish them a good luck? Um, NBA, NBA Junior? NBA Junior. Yes. What is that? That's it? Yes, tournament. The NBA Junior tournament. I wish them the best of luck. I think those types of things are so important. You know, like a lot of us want to be in fashion, want to be in the arts, want to be in music and stuff like that. But there's such a big world out there that we need to infiltrate and we need to make sure that we're doing well at everything. So, big ups and good luck. Exclusive MK Fresh Capsule Hunting for Thank Cakes. You for Peace. Me. Word. Uh, yeah.
Yo, well, what's up? This is Axe for Kick Still. We at Capsule Radio Podcast. We in the Caravella. Like my dad used this car for business, and I also use it for business right now. I'm into sneakers, he's into the taxi, so super excited to bring both the stories together. It's getting late at Capsule. We started in the morning broadcasting you the best at Capsule. We had different artists coming through into the van, but right now I got Cape Town's own. I call him a skyline, like if the, 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 the Cape Town skyline has got like buildings and the and the, and the airport and Rolo should be part of that skyline. This is my man, over 10 years we've been in the game together. I'm so proud of him because all these ghetto dreams that we had, we actually live in them right now. It might not financially really be there, but in terms of like aesthetically we care. We live in our passion and we live in our lives. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. It's not an interview, my man has been on the show before, so we're just going to chop it no, up. No, no, I haven't been on anything. You haven't been on Hatchet for Kicks? Nigga owes me a nigga. Oh, but shit! I'm right, it's fine. I'm not showing no one how many pages I have. Okay, cool. Fair enough. But I know you got the... <laughs> Rolo, I know now we're just talking about the first generation uh, 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 LeBrons, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about that story you were telling me. Yo, I thought we were actually recording, you know? But um, <laughs> that shoes, that shoes um, has, a, has, a, has like, I have memories of it, you know? So, the first joints... My guy JP had a pick, and when my homeboy Chris got locked up, I sent a pair to jail, and he sent a pair, I wrote top terms out, and um, he was rocking with LeBron in jail, you know, we, we didn't get a lot of pictures, because the, the phones wasn't like, like it was now, you know, yeah. so, um, that, like now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that, that's, that's gonna be like, I just got him now from Nathaniel, um, and, but my favorite one was the second one. Yes, yes, so, yes. So I, I, I feel like the the first generation was groundbreaking because the kids from high school getting a twenty million dollar uh, to two hundred million dollar deal with Nike, and I think that's when uh, Kanye was having a beef with the with the collab with the Yeezys. I think that was that no, was no, that's no, probably no. no, it was it was way before it was way before. But but I guess uh, La, uh, Kanye West's argument was based on the LeBron deal. Yeah, but yeah. how you give him. This deal, I also perform. He said yeah. that. I also perform. You're an athlete in your own space. Exactly. Yeah. So that's crazy that you mentioned. Um, when you look at it, like these, these are these small things. But when it comes to sneakers, like even now I wear all the brands. So, you tell the people. Tell the people. At least, my nigga, I want them to get a bit of background. Like with these podcasts, okay. I, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna show people a glimpse of the people that I talk, okay. talk to. So growing up. Who's in the house? Both parents are in the house. You got siblings. What's going on? Tell me. Okay, so like, with me growing up, um, we moved from Cape Town and we went to a little bit in So my mom, my mom got a job there. My dad also found. You no, know, my dad was. In, some something happened. Yeah. So now we we drive that way. Yeah. Hey, and now I don't understand the shit. Because now I'm coming from a public school, yeah. a private school. Yes. It's a compulsory. This motherfucking word has never existed <laughs> when I grew up. Compulsory. Yeah. This nigga is telling you, you need to go and run yeah. and play tennis after school. Yeah. It's compulsory. Yeah. You know, so that's when when I then um, obviously I have some other cousins, Daddy and you know them, they're like a couple of years old. They actually went to school with um, Abukile. Yes. You know, so, so that's also some funny shit. Like me and Abukile were at the same primary school in Grahamstown. Graham you know. <laughs> That's so now, yeah. this is now when, when I start getting introduced to like the music, like the hip hop, um, and all these things, yes. and, and, and XXL magazines. Yes. So now this shit shows me how to play. Yes, but, but who's who's in the house? Who, who's allowing you to do all these things? Yeah, so obviously now, where your parents I, my and my parents, clients yeah, my parents, no, I, they didn't know I'm buying me this magazine. Because my dad, my dad, my dad. My dad read one of them and like, yo, this people is swearing in this book. Yes, you know? and there's naked women in this Not place. necessarily, the day, but like, you know, Yeah, but like, I was just saying. You know, you know, like, yeah. what's going on here, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. But I, that was like my shit. That's how I got into like how niggas dress. That was my runway. Um, a lot of people think you get into sneakers from playing sport. Me, I was never athletic. Yes, you know? yes, But yes. you know, I'm a learned... Olympic gold medalist when it comes to the kicks. Yes, you know? yes. Um, that day we know is perfectly so, clear, nigga. So, so <laughs> in the streets is written. It was written. <laughs> so so going back, so then we moved back to Cape Town. So yes. now this is like how old are you this time? Standard five. That's oh, how old I am. I'm still using that yes. algorithm. Yes, yes. Now I'm back in the hood. And like 
niggas is looking funny to me. Because now me, I'm, I'm dressing like double XL and source. And niggas like, you know, I'm dressing like immature, you know, Batman and, and yeah. these niggas, you know, yeah, yeah. from the World Up magazine, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that's where my fashion sense like just took off. Dope. So now it's feet, always watching music videos play, always watching what these niggas wearing on the feet. And then you get the 90 sitcoms. Martin, Fresh Prince, in yes. the house with yes. the That was game over. Now I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this shit like, this niggas is, you know, now I'm starting to learn the names of the shoes. You know, and then I think we were standing stand at four going to standard five. That's when the first I got my first pair of, of, of Nikes, which was like a pair of air trainers. Yes. But it was an air screech, it was also like a turf shoe. Yes. And it had like a nice chunky sole and shit like no air bubble though. You know? And <laughs> no air like, bubble though. That, that was and like you guys are obsessed by air bubbles and yeah, that's, 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 that's like, the case. No air shit. bubble though. You know, yeah. but um, now going into high school now I'm getting I'm still I'm still copying the magazines and yes. paperweight. Yes. My nigga. Yes. So this is paperweight before they started putting press. This is when the motherfuckers used to weigh yes. the motherfucker. Yes. You understand? Yes. So now this yes. is an uh, people don't know paperweight. This yes. is when an outdated magazine gets recycled into these other joints and you can go and cop them when they weigh them. Yes. You know? Yes. So I'm still copying the double XL because it's expensive, like fifty bucks, sixty bucks, you know? Yes. And that is like go now it's high school. I'm still wanna I'm still wanna be fresh, you know? Great, great ten. You got the cornrows. Cornrows now. You know, I'm taking the risk. Because you know, I saw one nigga with the cornrows, mm -hmm. but it was like a two two standards, two grades bit above me, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, okay, wait, if they tell me I'm a scatter, I'm a scatter. Cornrows came. Vi, vi through. Yeah, yeah, nah, man. I said the through. Yeah. So, so now you check. We, we, it fast forwards into that thing, like now I'm still dressing like that, I'm still wearing Conros in, in high school, uh, what's the reaction now in high school with the Conros? Everybody's like, he wants to be American, he oh, wants to be a nigga, yeah. I mean I'm like fine, you know, that's yeah. why I can't dress like the 90s, because yes. I, I love that shit, yes. you know, and you know average you go on, matriculate, still got the Conros, first job, Conros, gold teeth, took out the front to put the gold teeth in, yes. Then just started laboring the fuck out of shoe, but every shoe that I wanted, yes. I'm just vying, you know. And fast forward a couple of years later, I get a I get a job with a brand Puma, yes. and that's when a lot of people started to know me. But before that, I was aligned with bitches must know. I've always been part of the Lost Property Crew, which is Zaid, and um, it's actually Sneaker Exchange's birthday today. Oh, that's crazy! That's nice. You know, so it's Sneaker Exchange's birthday. The first one was started on, on the 26th of October. That's good. And, bruh. Up to now, recent shit, sneaker, sneaker hotel, right? Like yo, yeah, man, it's just. And then, like, tell me your 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 transition between you coming from the streets, uh, getting into the corporate environment, the, the Puma deal. Mm. Tell me, how was that transition? How did you feel when you were there? Look, it was a, it was an amazing experience while I was there. You know, um, I got to learn a lot. You know, from a retail perspective to a marketing perspective, yes. and how to really incorporate your brand into into building and building relationships, and making yes. that shit look organic. Yes, you understand? Yes. So, like, you look at like the relationships that when I was there was formed. Like on the, on, on the early stages yes. of Nasty C, yes. Ricky, Casper, yes. all those niggas, you know. And um, it, it was a blessing, you know. Dope. Um, I've learned a lot, and some of that stuff I still incorporate now, like how to maneuver if I collab with the brand, how, what what do we get out of it? Yes, yes. You know, and um, that's how it is. Bro. And now you're at the uh, sneaker, sneaker cartel uh, yeah. spot. Tell the people about Sneaker Cartel, what you guys do over there. So Sneaker Cartel is basically a sneaker store, but it's a nightclub, and it's also a nightclub that is a sneaker store. So, so what, was it your idea? No, no, no. So someone, you see, we were talking, like, it's a, it's an idea that someone had, yeah. but now you need people to stitch that motherfucker together. Yes. And bridge it, like, yes. and um, so it was Joel's idea, yeah. and he did his research on, like, who, who do you bring in to, to assist this thing. Yes, you know, and your name popped in. It came up numerous times, numerous times. So, so then they reached out, you know, talk, 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 and boom, and um, it's been a year, more than a year, it's almost 20 months. Dope. How's uh, the vibe? Are you enjoying it? Um, the club vibe, I'm, 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 I'm too tired to go to the club all the time, but when yes. I pull up at the cruise terminal, 
on the events that I make. You know, we jump on the couches, we pull up with the fly cars, we make that shit look like belly. Uh, motherfuckers know we pulling up. You understand? <laughs> and then with the sneaker thing, man, what, what are you what are you guys doing? Are you guys doing instant uh, launches and so now nah, we don't do like um, a lot of most of the shoes are imported. Okay, cool. So, so we do it's a lot exclusive of exclusive joints. Exclusive joints is not found here. Import. Um, requests and shit like that. We imported like whatever shoe we want. So it's a lot of Nike bubbles, speed curves, all the shit. People don't even watch NFL, but motherfuckers is wearing the shoe. You understand? That's crazy. Uh, Bishop Levy, right? Yeah, that's Bishop your hood. That's where I'm from. It's just right by the airport. Yes. Um, you know, it's apparently I just saw the statistic. It's the most 13th most dangerous <laughs> city. I think there was that's some shit that wasn't, it wasn't reported. It's maybe like. But who's so, counting these days? I don't know who's uh, counting the bodies. Who's nigga? strong enough to even? <laughs> Come to the hood and be like, yo. It's I'm not counting the bodies, bro. That's crazy. Know. Like in the early years, we used to go to your hood and do photo shoots. Bro, that shit. Yeah. Remember that shit. Now it's gonna be an anniversary. Now it's a guy folks. You were there. That's crazy. And then you phone your mom and like, the mom phone and like, yo, why is the gunshots in the bag? And like, no, it's, it's fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't lie, bro. Roll, I can't believe you haven't been on Hunting for Kicks, man. I thought it's I'd fine, man. It's you fine, already it's fine. because Cape Town has always been an intricate part of uh, Look, the Look, if growth. we do something, we might just talk about the young rotation. You yeah. might just find me wearing three pairs of slides. Yes. One of them might be Crocs. Yes. That shit's mad comfortable. Yes. I don't give a fuck about anybody saying, yes. talk shit about my Crocs, you might meet my Glock. <laughs> 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 don't fuck around, don't fuck around. By the way, you know, yeah. um, you know, I'm just blessed to be at Capsule also, cool. you know. And so you got booked, show. you got booked to come do a, a talk at Capsule, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, what do you think? Look, it was for me, Lloyd Dem is doing the thing with that. The talk thing is a big thing because they did one in Cape Town, they always do it. Um, I was happy with the responses, the questions, all those things. It was, it was nicely prepared. So, away, you know. Hi. My nigga, your chain game is blinding the, the blinds. So, shout out. I hope you coming through with a customized one for me next time you are here. We need to do, we I need, need to, to do, do an order, yeah. I need you to know? give you a, a mark. I've got some marks here, my nigga, just to say, oh, Hall yeah. of Fame, keep it for you thank as you, a memorabilia, thank my thank nigga. You, thank you, thank we got you. Got you. MK. This is MK Fresh. I'm out here with the OG Rolo, talking culture, talking sneaker. We the shoe dog, man. We mutated from sneakerheads. We know sneakerheads no more. I think sneakerhead I, I is under yeah. 25. I haven't been a sneakerhead in a long time. I'm a shoe dog, man. Yeah, the I mean, curators are this year. I'm a purveyor from the feet up. Cultural purveyor from the feet up. You understand? <laughs> you feel me? Sneaker culture. Hunting for cakes radio podcast. We'll see you. We're still here. Peace. Peace. Uh, oh no, July. Anti for Kicks, it's a podcast, radio podcast. We're broadcasting live from Capsule, and I told you I was gonna sit down with the most interesting people in the game and find out what they do, what they're all about. And I got the two kids who are really making waves in this culture game that we're talking about. They curate content, they musicians, they they are their own people in their own right. They come from an area that I come from, which I'm proud of, which we created which is the Bram area, and they call us Bram Kids, and I'm proud of that title because whenever I get in the boardroom, half of the slides is us doing the stuff with the fashion, the sneakers, and all that. Boys, I want you to introduce yourself, starting from you, the voice. Tell the people who you are and what you do. Ah, now you got the mic, you good, right. I just want to start. Well, one, um, the voice, Illuminated Greens on Instagram. Um, I'm a DJ, I like fashion, I'm into like basketball, so I'm a street kid, man. <laughs> no doubt. Um, my name is Kamu Hello. Kamu. Um, Instagram hello is like hello sis. Um, I'm I'm like literally into fashion, styling. I love soccer and yeah, that's that's about it. Hi right, boys, we just gonna talk. Obviously, it's not an interview yes, and whatnot. I just wanna catch up with you about the the Bram Wave. How do you guys feel about that name? Because you know, a lot of time people take it as a negative connotation. Are you guys proud to be from that side of town? Fully. Yeah, fully. That's my thing. No doubt. Facts. So when we in the north, they know who we are, right? Uh -huh. no, no doubt. doubt. No doubt. So tell me about like the the, the capsule fest t today. What what's your best experience and which other brands which impressed you the most? I really fucked with what Vans did, man. Dope. Like Vans, like they did their own party in a party. Dope. With the whole checkerboard vibe and the 
the mirrors, the metallic, yeah, metallic, metallic, metallic as well. Dope. So like, yeah, and the Nike, the Nike, the Nike, the Nike dance uh, installation. I was packed in there, right? I wasn't true, understanding true. what was going on in there. Like. It's a dance competition. Uh, oh, they okay. actually doing the finals. Yeah. Oh, but, I remember but, that dance thing. That's in sports scene. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so now I feel like it's the finals, and they got folks and tyrants who charge the joints. Oh, yeah. Lit. I felt like as was was most uh, the most interactive installation in terms of like it, it talks of culture mm-hmm. and cultural people are there. Yeah. Even when you check the the, the skate, who's doing the skate thing? Is it? Speedster uh, was doing yeah. the, the skate. Skate hop, man. Yeah. So as well, like looking at that, like culture coming, using the cultural people right. doing their thing. Right. How do you feel about the local bands being on the other side? I really like that. It's like they really now trying to like implement um, homegrown things. Yes. As much as like it wasn't really in the limelight of everything. Yes. But it's I mean, a start. You know, it's a start. We're getting, we're getting somewhere. No doubt. Yeah. And then with the with the DJing, are you planning to release some music or what's what's your plan? Oh yeah, I'm currently I'm just dropping mixes. Um, I just dropped my my first mix um this month, and music is coming next year. No doubt. Yeah. yeah. And you, what's what's the future plan? Are you gonna design later on with the styling or I you need just to design? You need to design, man. Or to or remix as well. I think remix is part of like yeah. the fashion game right now, and true, everybody's on true. it. And that's how Dapper Dan as well got his name yeah. from remixing yeah. shit that was existing already. And I look at you guys more or less on that level. And, yeah, because oh, I need to. Because like a lot, lot of things that I want, I put like in my, um, what can I say, like in my display. Yes. So I need to like create, create yes. for me so that I can have it and like whoever wants it can also have access to yes. it. Because yeah. all of us are looking for that thing but like we can't actually find it. It's just like bits and pieces. Right. So I'm really like trying to like just gap it and just like infiltrate that whole gap. No doubt. Get what we need and what we like actually want and yeah. fuck with it. Dope. So like the rest of my life, my kids' life. Dope. And the generation to generation. And then what what are you start are you still studying right now? Yeah, I'm still studying. Fashion? Uh I left it. I went to Strat. Just to like I heard uh, about stress. Brand what, what, brand what communication. They, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I just wanna tap into that because at the end of the day I'm gonna need to know like what brands do and for my brand to like actually be successful. Be successful. I need to like know and be like self efficient. I'm not actually like try like as much as I would need to outsource, but I'm not trying to outsource. Dope. I'm trying to like just independently build, yeah. build it, yeah. That's so, dope. so I'm just I'm just trying to like learn for now and just do my thing, get my research yeah. in. Because I don't wanna rush into things. Dope. The DJing thing, with you you do stuff for for Stilo as well. Yeah. Tell me about that relationship. So Stilo is like my, my my big bro, just as much as you are. You know, Dope. actually boys and bags are my fault money. Dope. So it's like you know, um, really the relationship was just natural, and you know we just started working together. And then uh, when you don't play for him, you do your own DJ yeah. side, right? I do a lot of my own stuff also. Dope. Yeah. Dope. And you, you got a crew. Uh, tell uh, me NPA, a little bit about that. NPA, uh, not playing around. It's a group that we created, me, Lenzo, and Kai. So it's just like a creative space where we can like put what's in our mind to like live. Yeah. And because some of us are like just like misunderstood. Yeah. So we just want to like put our content that's in our minds just to live so they can see that, okay? Even these kids like, actually. And the influencer, this influencer program, uh, wow. niggas getting money for posting. Yeah. Are you guys engaging in that? Yeah, tapping yeah, into that. Yeah, doing into that, like, little by little. Yeah. Dope. And how do they get through to you? Do you get DMs on some young like your shit? Yeah. Come fuck with us. A lot of yeah. the time. Yeah. And also, like, just to, like, invite you to events. Like, events. events. That's when, like, that shit, like, kind of happens, yeah. yeah. They really no want to, like, that, that's where they, like, seek out your vibe, and then they see, like, if this person can actually work for the brand. Dope. Do you guys know anything about NBA uh, Junior League? No. I heard about that when just as I left high school. Yes. Uh, apparently, like they were trying to implement that into schools. Yes. Yeah. So, so they I'm got a. Basically, they got an academy sort of situation that's happening in the northwest. Been going on for a couple of years now. So today was the the finals of the tournament, and couple of the team, a uh, couple of the teams were going against each other, and there yeah. was one team that won. So, 
I just don't know the name of the team right now, but I just want you guys to give a shout out to NBA Junior and oh, yeah, say good facts. luck for next year. I guess. Big facts, yo. Shout out to NBA Junior. Unfortunately, I'm a bit too old for that, but. Yeah, under you know. 30. <laughs> shout, out to me. shout out to them, man. Like, basketball, like, for, for my whole high school career, I really saw myself like wanting to play like professional basketball. Yes. And then I got like my leg injury, so it was like that kind of cut my dream short. Yes. But like basketball is like my life, man. Me too. Like I played in high school. I think when I started playing, I was in grade eight, and it had my academics changed. Yeah. Uh, it, that and hip hop was really an intricate part of my yeah. life. Like I was gonna be stuck in the hood if I wasn't inclined. Like hip hop was the only thing that made me read books, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you hear common rhyme about a certain book, you're like, you into the book? <laughs> Let's go catch catch on that. Yeah. Park was heavily on that. Yeah. Because Park was more or less between uh, being real and being real. So yeah. he'll talk about uh, mom being sick and he'll talk about like yo don't step on my shoes yeah. type of realness right yeah. so he knew how to balance both that 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 subject yeah. so I come from that type of lifestyle where it's like without hip-hop without basketball yeah. and now it's funny the whole thing is kind of paying me it's paying the bills I followed it for so long that I remember in high school my nigga like uh, we played ball maybe with three years deep uh, maybe in grade 11 yeah. and then our coach is asking us how far we want to take this basketball thing yeah. and everybody was like oh, I mean I play in tertiary uh, you know I was like yeah. NBA nigga yeah, <laughs> NBA <laughs> and it's funny funny enough I think 2209 there's an NBA launch celebrity game yeah. with uh, well, AKA everybody was out there we kitted up with the NBA jerseys with my name at the back yeah, it might not be the league but, but, but it's part of the dream right me. no yeah. doubt so I, I wanna as well like share with you about like the darkness of the dream. I never got a chance to talk at the more better life. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you love something so much, ne? and and you follow your dream and you follow your passion. What happens when the love runs dry? You know what I mean? Because it's like uh, in your twenties, what you like and what you enjoy in your thirties is almost a total opposite of what that is. And a whole lot of people, because what we playing, it's a youth game. But most of the time, fashion is a youth game, and hip hop is a youth game. So when you reach your 30, you need to, if you, if you literally get on the dark side because everything that made you happy don't make you happy anymore. And I want you guys to be adamant about that. Always follow your passion. Always know that there will be dark times within. There will be no rent money. Sometimes yeah. the, the, the car will be towed up. You know what I mean? And I'm on that Steve Biko shit where it's like, black man, you're on your own, you know what I mean? Uh, it's not an easy ride, and if it was easy, everybody was gonna win at it. Yeah. It's a low percentage of success in that shit, you know what I mean? So, I wish you guys well and stay at it, hard at it, don't work hard. Work hard at it, don't sleep at it, you feel me? Thanks. All right. Thanks this so is it, man. I, I, I mean, I, I just get, I, I just get so passionate when I, when I chill with young niggas because I could see me and you guys. You're trying to find yourself. You're trying to realize a, a dream, and I don't want to sell you uh, a different story. I want you to know that it's hard as well as you go in, right? Yeah. yeah. No doubt. Shout out. Yo, shout the out. voice. Thank I you appreciate much. you, my boy. Yo, stay with the styling joint. You look, you like the most stylish nigga in the right now. Everybody's you. talking about you like the short nigga with the big heart. <laughs> he actually gave me that name. Yeah, the short nigga with the big heart. That's oh. crazy. Cause you were always like welcoming. You know, big heart. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's, and you must keep that. That's the only way. Even the attitude, like most of the time, the attitude. If you keep a right attitude, yeah, has success on its own. You clean. On time when they say 12, you there at 1130, my nigga, you, that's it. And you live your passion. Yeah. And you live it. All right, man, the Santa for Kicks. I'm chilling with the youngins, breaking bread. I appreciate everybody that's watching this. We'll see you on the flip side. Are we shutting down? Is it eight? Yeah. Uh, who knows you lie? Yeah. Uh. Come on, kids. Rock your kicks. Come on kids, rock your kids, cause there's nothing